In this video, we're going to try to figure out what happens to the kinetic energy of an object when you double the object's velocity. So if you imagine this is the object that we're considering, and it's traveling in this direction with a velocity v1, which we'll say is 2 meters per second, we want to figure out what happens to the kinetic energy of this object when we double this object's velocity. So in this case, we'll call this v2, when the velocity of the object when you double its velocity, and that's 2 times the initial velocity, which in this case would work out to be 2 times 2 meters per second, or 4 meters per second. Now in this case, you know the kinetic energy, we'll call it k1, is one half the mass of the object times the velocity of the object squared. And the one thing that we haven't defined is, let's just say the mass of this object is five kilograms. So if we wanted to know what the kinetic energy of this object was when it's traveling at two meters per second, all we have to do is do one half the mass, which in this case is five kilograms, times the velocity of the object squared, which in this case will be two meters per second, and we'll square the entire term. And when we do this, we get one half, of five kilograms times two meters per second squared works out to be four meters squared per second squared. And in this case, this will be five times four is 20 times one half will work out to be 10 kilogram meter squared per second squared works out to be a unit of a joule. And just recall that one joule is the energy required to apply a force of one Newton over a distance of one meter. Now let's try to figure out what the kinetic energy of this object is when we double the object's velocity. So we'll call this k2 for when we double the velocity of the object. In this case, this will work out to be one half the mass of the object times v2, the doubled velocity squared. Now in this case, this will work out to be one half the mass, and we came up with a relationship between v1 and v2. We said that v2 was equal to two times v1, the initial velocity. And then this is gonna work out to be one half the mass, that remains the same. And then this term works out to be two squared is four times v1 squared. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is rearrange this equation. I'm gonna pull this four out to the front. And when I do that, I get four times one half the mass times V1 squared. Now if you look at this term right here, it looks identical to this term right here. And what I can do is I can now rewrite this as four times this term, which is the kinetic energy of the object when it's traveling with half the velocity. So what I just did was I found a relationship that said, so what I can now say is when I double the velocity of an object, I quadruple the kinetic energy of that object. And just to cement this idea a little bit further, let's just do this part out. We said that this will be one half the mass of the object, which was five kilograms. And then we're gonna multiply that by the velocity of the object squared. And then we're gonna multiply it by the doubled velocity, which in this case, worked out to be four meters per second, and then we're gonna square the entire term. And when we do that, we get one half the mass, which is five kilograms, times four meters per second squared, works out to be 16 meters squared per second squared. And then when you multiply five times 16, you get 80. And then when you take one half of 80, you get 40 joules. And so if we look at this calculation, we figured out that the kinetic energy of the object when it's initially traveling at two meters per second worked out to be 10 joules. And so we can rewrite this as four times this kinetic energy, which in this case worked out to be 10 joules, which works out to be 40 joules, which matches up perfectly with our actual calculation. 